Well, I'm Kimberly Gasly. I'm the president and CEO for Live Hospice, and I'm here today with Curtis Shaw Child, a dear friend of mine and just truly an innovator. Um, and when I think about legacy and the legacy that you live every day and that you will leave behind, um, it was natural for me to want to reach out to you. So we have these at Alive, we created these conversation cards, and when I looked at them, there are certain things that you know, made me think of different friends. And you know, for you, when I looked at one of the cards, I was wondering, I want to ask you a question and have a conversation around it. Of, you know, what do you want to see more of in the world? And what role do you play in, in making those changes? Well, um, I mean, it all comes down to love, really, doesn't it? You know, I mean, we want to see everybody getting along, you know, people understanding and listening to one another. Um, but for me, I just want, you know, at this period of time, just kind of, it's been so volatile and so strange and with the COVID, um, you just want, you know, you just want to love one another. And, um, I mean, besides love, I would love, I would like to see more empathy. I'd like to see accountability. I'd like to see, um, more grace and more kindness. Um, that's kind of what I've tried to teach my kids. I mean, as they've been growing up, uh, I've always felt like I was, um, I've always felt like I followed a certain path that was laid out before me, whether it was divinely given and um, have always tried to walk in kindness and have always felt kind of called to um, go in certain directions. I mean, my life has not been um, a traditional uh, professional working life. My, I have been kind of a behind the scenes uh, producer of a life mm -hmm. and um, I've met some amazing interesting people along the way and so as I go through my life I try to be kind of a student of understanding what I can how I can be of service and how I can help other people um, but really the most important thing I think is for us to love one another and at the end of the day I mean that's all that really remains isn't it yeah, that's interesting because I think we all naturally think about love. Like I love my husband, I love my child, I love my job. Uh, but there's some days you don't. So how do you, if you want to see more of it in the world, how do you remind yourself when you're not feeling that like you're giving or receiving? I think it's about um, reminding to be patient with yourself and understanding that there's no nobody feels one way all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and that's part of what it's like, what it's about to be alive. You know, we're supposed to have so many different colors in our lives. And um, I think that daily, hourly, just taking an inventory and being clear, being present of exactly where you are um, I've thought a lot about what you do at Alive and, um, you know, helping people, usher people to um, have a beautiful ending or have, you know, and really talking about um, how they want to be remembered. It's just that's so, it's holy work, really. It's beautiful and it's holy work and... Um, I'm just, I'm moved by it, I really am. So I know there's been points in your life that you've had to, to fight for the right to have the love you want to have. And if you're comfortable talking about that, because there's, you know, you talk about it alive. We, part of what we're supposed to do is create an environment where, where you can have those final moments. And we, our mission 45 years ago said nothing about Caucasian heterosexuals. It said for the patient, the family, and the community they live in. So when you talk about wanting to see more love in the world, there's been times where you've had to fight to be able to make the declaration of that love. 
I, I would say that that's absolutely true. Um, me personally, as a person, my, I'm kind of a silent fighter. Um, I was raised in Missouri by a family that viewed all people as equal. And so that was a blessing for me to have grown up in that. And um, I always felt driven in my own direction, uh, which was a little bit against the grain for people, other people in my family and in my family circle. So I ended up going to New York. And um, over the course of my life, I have, I have grown to know so much about myself. I have learned. And uh, meeting Desmond, Desmond has been one of my, Desmond is my husband, and um, he's been one of my greatest teachers. You know, he really has. Um, we've been together for 32 years um, this coming April. And we have, um, you know, I think that's what relationships should be and are supposed to be. Like we're in it together and we're committed and, um, but yet we learn things all along the way. And for Desmond and I, we were, um, we actually took a hiatus about 10 years into our relationship where um, we were apart for a year and a half. And there were things that I learned in that time um, there. Are, and then the decision, the, the grace of uh, forgiving one another and committing to come back together and create a family was something else. But all along the way, um, more so when I had, when we had a family, um, I felt just by us showing up um, was kind of a testament of toward equality, toward, um, I mean, it was, it, the whole thing about gay marriage, I mean, Desmond and I had been together already over 20 years by the time gay it's marriage came through. And so, yeah, it's a long engagement. Yeah. But so, you know, what happens between people, um, you can't deny. We had a commitment to one another and we didn't necessarily need a piece of paper. It's great that we're married and on a personal level, there is, um, I don't know, there's a satisfaction and a beauty of looking back and understanding the life that we've created to, for one, with one another. Can we I answer a, your question? You did. We had a gentleman whose wife passed under our care and I was walking through our building with him and I asked a question of, how long were you married? And he replied by saying, I've been in love with her for 29 years. And I went to touch his arm and I recoiled because I thought that was for my comfort, not for his. So I went home and told my husband, I said, you don't ever have to remember how many years you've been married. You just have to remember how many years you've been in love with me. That's beautiful. I know. So you're right. It doesn't make a difference of when that magical day was of when you had a you know, pretty cool wedding, but it was the day that you realized you were in love and that there was a commitment. Yeah. And for me, you know, thank goodness. I mean, it, it only gets better. I mean, the funny thing, the, uh, the boys were home for the holidays and, uh, I was making dinner on a Sunday night and, uh, <laughs> I had put on, um, it's so rare that I kind of have a moment by myself. And so I was taking the moment to kind of cook and I put on some music and I had a glass of tequila. And then the tequila, I, a song came on that kind of made me feel, I became overcome because I was like, this is what it felt like um, when I met Desmond. You know, it was kind of a, the story of the song, it's a Maggie Rogers song. Um, and it was kind of like, wait, I don't know if I'm ready for this. And I've kind of felt that way you know, about Desmond since the beginning, you know, and as we've been together longer, I, for me, it just gets better. And I would hope that, I think that he would say the same. I bet your boys would say the same too. Yeah, but oh, that was the good thing. I, I was tearful 
and it was time to serve dinner. And then I put the song on to play for the boys. And I said, would this be a good thing to show them? And I said, I think it is good. Because in my family, I'm very much the disciplinarian. And they see a harsher side of who I am because I'm the rule follower. And Desmond can be like fun dad. Um, <laughs> and I'm discipline dad. And so I put it on and tears were flowing. And I said, this is how I felt when I, um, when I met your dad and i'm sure they were just like oh god what is <laughs> oh papa what are you doing but um you know i think it's important for us to be vulnerable to our kids that's something else i'd like to see in the world vulnerability um especially you know at school events and different things that we as you move through life i feel like the people that you're grab you gravitate to are the people who really reveal themselves and I think that's part of why we connected through our school community. You know, we're both, we, you know, are brave enough to just kind of reveal who we are. And I love that. Okay. Let's talk about mothers. Okay. No, I just, because coming or driving over here, I was thinking if you asked about um, your mom and her, what you're most proud of, or, I mean, I'm so proud of my mom. Um, like the way she grew up, she grew up in a fundamentalist Christian home in um, Southeast Missouri and in Hawaii. She was there when Pearl Harbor was bombed. She has such a rich history, um, but a very religious family. And the fact that, she, and I'm one of four boys, and she had no idea that she, how she would, how my being gay in that family would change the trajectory of her life. Like, because she has really, truly become an advocate for LGBTQ people and is just such a kind heart and such a support to other people. And so, in some ways, I feel responsible without really being responsible because um, if I hadn't been who I was, that whole swath, that whole color of her rainbow painting of her life um, would be different. You don't think the love is love would have just applied though? Because you know, she's I think, a very kind I mean, she's always been a kind person and very empathetic and, but I think that when it, when it's a part of your family, when it's part of your immediate family, she wouldn't, it wouldn't have affected her in the same way. I don't think that she would have become a leader in that, in her church, in her community, if, um, if we hadn't gone through that, walked through that together. And so, you know, it's interesting too, thinking about Roman and Nero, and technically they don't have a mother. I've been thinking a lot about mothers mm -hmm. lately. I mean, I have some friends who have lost their mothers recently, mm -hmm. and thank goodness mine is still with us. She'll be 89 in May. Wow. And, um, I don't know, the idea of legacy and talking about history and I don't know, it just kind of popped into my head that yeah, that relationship I'm so proud of. That's awesome. I think, and that's part of like when we talk about living the legacy you want to leave. You know, my dad told me when, you know, he died when I was 16, so this is going way back in time. But he said, Kimberly, when you die, and someone memorializes you or reads your eulogy, you don't want them to just say she was a hard worker. Mm -hmm. So he so said, whatever you want them to say is what you have to live. And in essence, without anyone telling your mom, maybe maybe you did take responsibility because you, you showed her that love is love, but you're gonna love a little bit differently. And then because of her love for you, she became an advocate for, for love. I mean, it took Beyond time. Tradition. I mean, sure. you had to add time to that because Really, you know, I came out to my mom uh, at the same time I met Desmond. And so really it was, took her about 10 years mm -hmm. before she could really talk to other people about it. Um, and that's a long time. Sure. But over that time, I kind of created my family of choice in another, um, wherever we were living and with Desmond. And, um, but it's funny enough that when we had children, that's when it all started coming back together. You, know, you say that because the boys don't 
technically have a mother, but I've always been such an advocate that two loving parents is more important than a mom and dad. You know, we see so many families, and, and we see it a lot too, that many times when people are in our care, that's the final moment in which a family tries to come back together. But sometimes there's just too many bad feelings coming up to that. So when you see that it's just sincere love and trust and respect for each other, it doesn't make a difference who's in the room. It's more the feeling and emotion associated to it and the respect you can see. As I said, that gentleman who said, I've been in love with my wife for 29 years. I knew, I didn't even know what she looked like because I didn't get to meet her. But the way he, the way he demonstrated such a commitment to her, and I think the same, uh, the way you and Desmond demonstrate what love is and how you treat your kids. That yes, maybe, I remember somebody asked Roman, like it was maybe freshman year, and they're like, so you don't have a mom? And he's like, no, but I got two, two dads. And he's like, that is so cool. <laughs> so it was like, wait, what are you saying about me? But <laughs> she thought it was super cool that he had two dads. Yeah, we've gotten that a few times, you know, in preschool, when kids are so, you know, they don't know really what's going on. But a mom ended up telling me that their kid had come home and said, I want to have two dads, too, <laughs> just like Roman and Nero, you know. I bet I mean, Roman probably sold it a little. <laughs> <laughs> but the key for us has always been, and, you know, the, the family line was fa love is love, and they're all different kinds of families. And that's, it's the truth. That's true. It's all true. And as you walk through life, you, um, you know, we just have to be kind to one another and love one another and uh, try to help one another as we all walk through life. So if you think of your mom's legacy, what would you, what would you think the legacy is that she's leaving here? Well, Clearly she's not going anywhere yet. But it's she's not going anywhere, anywhere yet. But um, gosh, I mean, She's been a bit of a rebel. And my mom was the second of 11 children. And she was supposed to go to college and meet a missionary and be a missionary's wife. But she met my dad. And so she went against my uh, grandmother's will to marry. But if you meet my mom, she's like as meek as a mouse. And I mean, unless you've done something wrong. I mean, can you imagine how strong you have to be to raise four boys? Sure. No, all within that. all within seven years of one another we were four boys all so she she could definitely you know be a taskmaster um but her trajectory she's a retired um english teacher high school english teacher my dad was a superintendent of public schools and um uh a professor at a university in education administration. So she had so many different phases in her life, but then later on in life, really the center of her life when she retired was to be an advocate for LGBT people within her, you know, within her family, you know, cause she's one of 11 kids and that expands, that goes pretty far. Um, and talking to people about stuff, trying to get people to understand and uh, accept. And uh, I think that she's made a, an amazing difference for a lot of people. That's awesome. Especially for us. Just having her as part of our family and our life has been a true blessing.